opportunities do you think exist for families and local leaders in DPI to collaborate together uh, to really get um, to provide our children with even a better education than we're already doing? Do you see a way for that? Yeah, that's something that my team at DPI and I think about every day, all day. Um, so we collaborate frequently with the legislature. With the legislature, we are asked to come in and speak at hearings. We are asked to come and speak um, at different committees. You know, Representative Torbett has a Future of Education committee mm-hmm. that that we are guests of frequently. Um, we collaborate with um, all kinds of groups that are trying to um, create initiatives uh, that that will. Um, allow for communities rather than just the government to help support our students and to help make education better. One of the things that I'm doing right now is um, I have created a parent advisory council, which you and I have talked about in the past. Its first meeting will be September 15th. We're so excited. We had thousands of applications. And um, this group of 48 Parents will, will come to DPI on September 15th to start mm-hmm. talking about things that matter to them. They are going to define what their work looks like moving forward. But I, I think that North Carolina is a state that um, there are lots of, of opportunities locally mm-hmm. where people can get involved. You know, every high school has a business council um, where business leaders in a community can come and and those meet, you know, a couple of times right. a year mm-hmm. and they talk about opportunities for kids after they graduate. But I, there are so many opportunities for um, for students to accelerate their learning. We've got our early college high schools in North Carolina that allow students to um, take community cl- college classes. Um, they can do a fifth year at, on the state's dime mm-hmm. and, and complete a year of community college while they're still in high school. We have College and Career Promise, mm-hmm. which the legislature continues to fund, which allows kids to take college classes while they're still in high school for free. Um, we, we are the party of opportunity, and I see that everywhere I go in the state. I think that's wonderful. Um, how would you encourage the voters to keep an eye on education? and know their local candidates. So they've got to do both. That's right. That's right. I highly recommend that if you are a voter who's looking at a list of candidates, check out their social media. Look and see what they're doing on social media. Are they trying to have positive conversations about ways to to change what's Mm -hmm. wrong? Or are they attacking and uh, and being ugly online, Mm -hmm. as we like to say? Um, are they looking to create solutions or are they just suggesting that we throw more money at the problem? Because if that's what they're doing, then chances are they are not thinking critically about the challenges that are in front of us. Um, you know, I, I, like, I like to look for candidates who um, recognize that when we talk about education, we're talking about people. We're not talking mm-hmm. about the entity of education. When we talk about school choice, we're talking about what a parent thinks is best for their child. It's not about protecting the system of public education. There are great public schools out there, and there are public schools that, that may or may not be great, but school choice is not about whether or not a public school is good mm-hmm. or not. It's about what is right for a child. And so I would look for candidates that recognize that parents know what's right for their children. Absolutely. And I, I agree with you 100%. It's a parent knows best for that's that child. Ex- that's and exactly right. I think the Republican Party is exactly the party that's promoting that. So, Well, I, I can tell you that um, there are a, a lot of Democratic legislators that will um, vote against Opportunity scholarships, which which pay for low-income families mm-hmm. to send their child to a private school, um, as well as want to um, stifle the growth of charter schools, which are mm-hmm. public schools in North Carolina. Well, thank you so much for all that you do. You truly you do a great job for us, and we so appreciate it. 
there anything else you'd like to share with candidates out there or even parents that might be listening? Well, Susan, first of all, thank you for what you do. Not only are you a mom and a teacher and the vice chair of our party, um, but you are out there on the front lines all the time. You have such a positive message to share with people. And I personally thank you for being a teacher. Thank you very much. And especially a CTE teacher. We need our CTE teachers. Um, I I would say candidates, you know, take heart. It's hard work Mm -hmm. to be a candidate. It, it, like we said earlier, it, it takes money, it takes time. This is um, something that you have to take time away from your job and mm-hmm. your family to do. But um, we need you because we we need candidates to make our system of government work. Oh, absolutely. And we need school board candidates more than ever yes. right now, I think. This is the time definitely to try to uh, to get more conservatives on our it, school boards. It is. And we, we can look at um, how school boards voted in North Carolina and across the country. Uh, when we go back to look and see how school boards voted when it came to opening schools or keeping them closed, they voted along party lines. Right. Republican candidates voted to open schools. Uh, Democratic candidates voted to keep schools closed. And, and so I would, um, uh, as I said before, our, our data show how Um, kids are paying the price for those votes now. And so our conservative candidates can can really lean into that as well. Catherine, explain to me why are local boards of education so important? Well, that's a great question, Susan. And the answer is this. Local boards of education have a lot more authority than most people realize. And the reason that is, is because in North Carolina, we have something that goes back to our laws in the 1930s called local control. And that means that while we have a state board of education and we have a state superintendent, matters of curriculum, like what uh, book am I going to use to teach Mm -hmm. this or what what lessons am I going to to do, what curriculum am I going to purchase to teach our health standards, those decisions are all made at the local level by local superintendents and, um, and principals. Mm-hmm. And then teachers also have a lot of uh, discretion about what they're going to use to teach mm-hmm. courses. And so I'll give you a scenario. If a, a student comes home and tells a parent that they had to do an assignment that a parent doesn't agree with, mm-hmm. They can email me and complain about it, and I have no recourse or regulatory authority over that local principal or superintendent. But they can call their principal, their local superintendent, and their school board to talk about the need for an an alternative Mm -hmm. assignment. And so it's really important that voters understand why it's important that we have local school boards that they understand the difference between the State Board of Education and the, the, the local Board of Education. State Boards of Education vote on things like academic standards, mm-hmm. but when it comes to the actual curriculum that is used to teach those standards, that is made at the local level. Wow. Um, I've also heard that with our State Board of uh, Education that you do not have a vote on that. Is that correct? That's right. Our state constitution lays out the governance structure of K-12 education, um, which is very different than our community colleges and our universities. So the State Board of Education is appointed by the governor, and they are appointed for eight-year terms. And so right now, our State Board of Education is primarily composed of Governor Cooper's appointees. Um, The state superintendent does not have a vote on the State Board of Education. Um, The lieutenant governor and the state treasurer, both of whom are Republicans right now, also sit on the State Board of Education and also do vote. But I do not have a vote on the State Board of Education. That's just two votes there. So, yeah, I know. So this is why it's important that we elect a Republican in the next um, 2024 election. And keep our superintendent so that we can continue down this path we're going. That's exactly Uh, right. So, but, well, thank you so much again for um, 
informing us and enlightening us on all of the things with our education and for joining me on Eye on Education. So thank you again, and I'll talk with you guys later.